And you're very welcome back to St. Comas Park in Cove. As uh, we're about to get the second half underway, the referee, Oliver Warren is at least. And uh, the sides are level going into the second period at one goal apiece. Uh, if you're joining us late here on LOI TV, I'm your match commentator, Trevor Welch. And alongside me, uh, former Cove Rambles great, uh, John O'Rourke. Uh, but uh, it was uh, Patrick Ferry who gave uh, Finn Harps the lead after nine minutes. But right before half time, then, Mikey Rowe level things up for Cove Ramblers and you just worry, uh, not worry, but wonder John how Ramblers will go about this now in the second half after getting the uh, halftime te team talk from their manager Shane Keegan. Yeah, as we said, it was a certainly a different team talk uh, after Cove equalised just prior to half time. So they've, they've been using that and hoping to push on and get the three points to secure the playoff spot. It's a great incentive, great motivation, just so what we see, we should see is the desire and the uh, Willingness to go and, and get those three points. Great turn again by Jack Darty. What about that for a cross? And they've won a corner kick out of that. But uh, Jack Darty again wouldn't like to be marking him, would you, John? Because he can turn in the sixpence. Yeah, he's he's very tricky as as poor old Matthew uh, Milkinson for Van Harps found out to his cost in the, in the first half. No, Jack brings quality and, and you know he's he's causing problems for defences throughout the season. Early corner kick then in the second half for Ramblers. Let's see what they come up with here. Plenty of height in there. A frail and lines, and there's the corner towards the near post, and it's gone out for another one. Mikey Rowe will take again. Great addition, yeah. hasn't he, uh, Mikey Rowe, to yeah, Cole Ramblers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said, him, Jack Darty, and Wilson Moreiro um, are, are going to be a problem for any defence. Well, there is a, a big expectancy now from Cove Ramblers uh, support, especially when they play at home, to get the job done and uh, to get positive results. And that's what we're seeing, as you mentioned at the start, uh, Ramblers unbeaten in the last 11 home league matches. Wasn't the case last year. No, certainly not. Here's the corner. Plenty of uh, dip on that, and the goalkeeper again decides to fist the ball clear. He doesn't uh, fancy catching those crosses, the goalkeeper, Antonio uh, Tula. Yeah, he doesn't take chances in there. Too many bodies around, so maybe it's the right decision to. But Cove are certainly um, targeting that area from the corners. Jack Darty puts him in from the, the right hand side with his left leg, and Mike, Mikey Rowe put, puts him in with his right leg on the left hand side. Antonio Tuta is, of course, the uh, keeper for Finn Harps. Nothing he could do about the uh, Mikey Rowe one, but he's uh, made a few saves. That's a push on the back on Jack Darty. And now this is a good area for Ramblers. Yeah, again, Matthew Makins in there uh, having trouble trying to deal with Jack and concedes the foul in a good area, as you say, Trevor. So Mikey Rowe will be trying to get this in, whip it in, and again, it, it'll be going into the, the area between the goalkeeper and the defenders. Mikey Rowe standing over this. All about the quality of the cross here now. And as uh, Charlie Lyons. And Brendan Frahel are up for this with a set piece. Charlie O'Brien did a, an extensive warm up half, at half time. We might see him in at some point in the second half for Ambrose, but let's see what they do with this free kick. Mikey Rowe in there, but uh, good header away. Rowe back into the mix again, it goes. Now, got a man out wide here, Ramblers, but uh, it's good defending. Ramblers. Into one at back, but uh, goalkeeper Antonio uh, Tuta down to take control. Finn Harps uh, been a match so far for Cove Ramblers. Do you expect Ramblers to try and up the tempo in the second half and ask a few more questions of Finn Harps defensively?
Big throw in there by McNamee. McNamee trying to get on this again. It's a throw for Cole Ramblers. Lee Stacey taking a heavy touch here. It's uh, all's well that ends well. That's uh, back to Stacey again from Egwabor. Now Jack Darty, that's a clever flick from Darty, and he's in the middle here waiting for the cross and uh, there's the header coming in but off target from Mikey Rowe but well worked, lovely little layoff wasn't it from Jack Darty? Uh, again showing his class there, Jack getting the cross in but Michael McCarthy you know the, the cross over to uh, Matthew McKevitt who was, was probably a bit too high, he didn't get a good connection on it and uh, opportunity lost there for Cove. Yeah it was Matthew McKevitt's header I beg your pardon. After a lovely layoff again by Jack Doherty. He's an ever present danger. Cove Rammers number 10. And there's Abbott for Cove, but uh, one back by uh, McNamee. Now, Harps on the attack here. That's Flood. That's a poor pass from him. Abbott, the Ramblers captain, chasing Abbott. Well defended again. And Flood losing out. Jalik Byrne, now maybe something here. That looked like a free kick. Jack Darty, he's still going, Darty. And Darty! And uh, a handball in there, it's a penalty. Well, Jack Darty again, so lively, getting away from his man. And uh, well, that is a penalty, and the referee, to be fair, Oliver Moore had no hesitation. Handball in there. Happy for him to blow the whistle this time, Trevor. Yeah, he has whistled. Cole would be. He has been whistle happy, all right, but uh, this is going Cove's way, and uh, you'd fancy that it will be Jack Doherty. Oh yeah, to step up and put He'll this be away. all over that to add to his tally for the season. Well, he made it himself, you know, a tricky play. Waiting for the opportunity to get the shot off, created it himself, as I said, and uh, pulled the trigger with his left foot, and it was goal bound. But um, the defender put his hand out and conceded the penalty. Scored in his last two, Jack Darty, and you'd uh, banking him to score here as well tonight. Darty into the corner it goes. Goalkeeper went the right way. He'd be disappointed. Antonio uh, Tuta got a hand to it. But Jack Darty did enough to find the corner, and he scores again, the number 10. Absolutely, yeah, he's on a fine, rich, rich vein of form, and a um, bit lucky there, as you said, Tuta nearly got to it, uh, but it went the right way, but it squeezed in the near post. Um, so Cove going to the lead, and uh, they'll, they'll be looking to push on from here and get those three points to assure the playoff spot, Trevor. Well, they went behind after nine minutes, Shane Keegan's side, but they've responded like a team who are showing great consistency, and they're in front now. Mikey Rowe before half time and Jack Darty again. Can't stop scoring the Cove Ramblers number 10. Set up the first and scores the penalty for the second. Yeah. He's playing really well. So just the response and just the start of the second half that Shane Keegan would have been looking for. You know, you talk to Shane Keegan, John, and uh, I have uh, interviewed him many times this year. And uh, he, he talks about, you know, the fight in the team as well as he's got a lot of quality players, let's be honest, in the team. But uh, there'll never be a lack of fight, he said, with these players. Yeah, well, that's shown through tonight. 1-0 um, down, so they've come back to the lead here now in the second half, 2-1. So that's great. Um, it's a great, great, great response for them. So they're fighting for hard. Like, and they have something to fight for, Trevor, compared to last season, they were bottom of the league. Um, this season, their promotion playoff in their sights. They're gonna. It looks like they're gonna could get a 
guarantee that tonight, but um, early, surely over the next few games they will guarantee it. And you know, it's a great, great um, turnaround from last season. Certainly is. Matthew McKevitt felt he was fouled then, but the referee gives a throw for but, Finn Harps. But on that, on that point, yeah, I mean, like, there's a great fight, you know, great people are putting in, but you have to have quality, and they have added this year with like so Jack Darty. The quality is there to turn games around and to get goals, which is obviously what, we, what wins games. Goes without saying, so they can they have that to share in the tank. Yeah, and you'd uh, expect uh, Cove now to go on and extend that uh, run of 12 straight matches without defeat here at home at St. Comans Park. That's what Keegan wanted to make uh, St. Comans Park a fortress, and that's the way it's turning out to be. Thought you were going to get your head on that one, John. Yeah, it's a bit too far away. Tony Ryan, the referee, has a <laughs> diving head on referees, those referees again. <laughs> Thought you're going to sprawl out in front of me, John, for a diving header. Yeah, off the seat, all right. <laughs> miss playing, obviously, John. Every player played uh, at certain level, or any level, really, misses playing the game. Absolutely, nothing like it. You know, you get involved after you finish playing in management, coaching, or whatever. But uh, there's nothing like it. Every player will tell you the same. Everyone, everyone does. You know, it's nothing like it. Getting in, getting on the pitch, and. Been involved in the dressing room, the whole lot. Um, obviously, as to, that's the key part. So, what I said to anyone that as to, they're lucky enough now at the moment, enjoy it while it lasts, lads. And you know, there's good camaraderie, you can see that in the squad. Enjoy it while it lasts. Well said. Bamber is free kick. And they have the bit between the teeth now. Shane Keegan's side. Abbott, the captain, floating it in there invitingly, but uh, it misses everybody, and Harps can just uh, boot a clear here. But uh, Ramblers have it again. And that was uh, Kean Brown, and Brown on it again. It's done well, isn't he, uh, for Ramblers this season, Kean Brown? Yeah, another addition and has worked out successfully. Played really well. As it stands, the way the results are going tonight, Ramblers will secure their playoff spot. Galway will clinch the title, the way things are going, but uh, long way to go yet in all the games tonight. Jack Darty again, great hold-up play. That's a really good layoff as well. Alec Byrne, and uh, that's uh, Kian Brown. Byrne again. Not a good addition, Alec Byrne. We know he can play. Forward by Frahill and Jack Darty on the turn again, but uh, this time he's fouled his man. Yeah, Jack's confidence is up now. He's really, uh, you know, trying the tricks out there in the pitch. Not many goals in the Premier Division tonight, but Shelburne do lead Cork City by two goals to one, and St. Pats are two up on Dundalk. That's where all the games are scoreless. We'll bring you all the scores uh, throughout the night here on LOI TV. Myself, Trevor Welsh, and John O'Rourke alongside me in the commentary box tonight in what is a crucial night in the Artistic League of Ireland. Yeah. Obviously, things can happen tonight. Galway win the league, Cove get, get guaranteed their playoff spot. We're coming to the business end the part of the season, Trevor. Things happen, promotion and relegation. Indeed. Cork City in trouble in uh, Talca Park. Um, you know, they're down the bottom. They'd be looking to get out of that playoff spot. But uh, the games are running out, it seems. Yeah. It looks... Uh, it Red card. Red card being shown here. A straight red card. For that tackle. Follow through, I think. You know, he left his yeah. leg there. Looked like a follow through. And, uh, well, it's the goal scorer, isn't it? No, it's no, so Sean O'Donnell, sorry, yeah. Sean, Sean O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Patrick Ferry making his way over just to. But it's. Uh, it is Sean O'Donnell. He has been uh, sent off here, straight red card. For the follow through on Kean Brown, and that further helps Cove Ramblers cause here now. It's 
So Finn Harps and a half an hour to play. We're down to ten men. Sean O'Donnell giving his marching orders straight to the dressing room. The Harps number 20. Apologies to Patrick Ferry. Took his goal well, mind you. Uh, if you join us later in LOI TV at St. Comas Park and Co. Ferry gave uh, Harps the lead on nine minutes. Mikey Rowe equalised a couple of minutes before half time. And then early in the second half, Jack Darty with a penalty. And Rambler is leading Finn Harps by two goals to one. And you wonder now. Oh, that alters things, but uh, Harps down to 10. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and Cove should sense it, like to, to try and put the game to bed here now. Um, but Harps will, you know, sometimes it works in their favour, you know, 10 men, they really rally. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens here. One goal more for Rambler should do the trick, you'd feel. Harps have uh, defended OK tonight, for the most part. Good control by Ferry. All the way across to uh, Kyo. Shame is Kyo still going. Now, can he get the cross away here? Kyo is taking too much out of it in the end, really. And it's a throw for Cove Ramblers. Things going Ramblers' way in the other game as well, but uh, long for behind. All the team and six going into this game tonight. So a playoff place, it looks like, could be indeed secure tonight for Cove Ramblers. With uh, still five matches remaining. Well, uh, four for Ramblers. But that's some achievement if they can wrap that up tonight, John. With four games to go. Yeah, absolutely. Securing our playoff place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said there earlier, it's probably better to finish third or fourth. Um, the way the, the way the, the setups uh, setup is for the playoffs, um, third place plays fourth and second place plays fifth. So you you don't want to be meeting Waterford in a two-legged affair, you know. That's what I would think anyway. Jack Darty tried uh, to be probably a bit too clever then. Uh, Ramblers have it again. At least they had it again. Oh, slip and Egobor getting forward here for Ramblers with a bit of purpose and uh, trying to play it through for Mikey Rowe, who uh, has it. McEvitt, in fact, and McEvitt. McEvitt still, and that's the third goal. Good finish by Matthew McEvitt. He showed great body strength there before firing past the goalkeeper, and surely now the three points are in the bag for Cove Ramblers. Yes, Trevor, yeah. Unfortunately, it hasn't been a great night for the Matthew McIntyre and the Finn Harps defence. Jack Doherty has run him ragged, and now he tried to play a ball out there. He got caught in possession by Matthew McEvitt, who showed great composure and strength, as you said, Trevor. Pushed the ball out, out from under his feet and just slotted the ball in nicely, coolly slotted it home for a great finish. Deserved goal. So a two-goal cushion for Cove Ramblers, who went behind so early in the match, and they've responded superbly well like a team who are used to winning football matches and it becomes a habit, doesn't it, John? Absolutely, and as I say, it's the business pen end of the season, business part of the season we're coming to. They're flying, they're getting results, they're getting goals and the confidence is well and truly up. It looks like Alec Byrne is uh, making way here, a substitution for Cove Ramblers. And about 25 minutes left in the game. Dale Holland. So Holland for Burn, for Ramblers. And that's the kind of quality that uh, Shane Keegan could call upon off the bench, John. 
Yeah, absolutely. Jade has been having a tremendous season in the middle of the park there. So um, he can come on and he'll just slot into the role, no bother to him. So it looks like the four teams in the playoffs, uh, John, will be Waterford, Cove, Atlone, Wexford. You know, Ramblers have done well against all the other three teams that could face the season. So yeah. they won't certainly uh, be overawed by uh, any of those teams no, in, not in the all. playoffs. Not at all, Trevor. And as, as we keep saying here, their momentum is with them. The confidence is up. They went down to Waterford last week, who would be seen by everyone as the team to probably win the playoffs amongst the first of clubs. Went down to Waterford, beat them 2-0, and, uh, you know, they've nothing to fear. And even, like, if they were, if they did come out of the first division, I wouldn't think they'd have anything to fear from whoever finished the second bottom in the Premier Division. And I keep saying this, with Jack Doherty, the way he's playing, Wilson Moreau and um, Mikey Rowe as a strike force, they'll, they'll trouble any defence. Yeah. So they have every opportunity, so just keep in mind on going. We all know football, anything can happen. Um, so, as, as I said already about the two-legged, it's only two-legged affair for the first part of the playoff. So, yeah. if they finish third, they play third and fourth, playoff two, two legs. So, then every other game is, is a one-off. So, they have, a, they have every opportunity. Well, a couple of substitutions here for Finn Harps. Uh, the goal scorer, Patrick Ferry, has been withdrawn. I think uh, Kevin Jordan has uh, come on. And... Uh, Aaron McLaughlin is also in for Finn Harps. I think it's uh, Billy uh, Banda as the player has been withdrawn. So a double switch for Finn Harps. We're down to 10. And, uh, you know, from what was a positive start by the visitors, they're now looking at defeat again. Yeah. Well, I mean, like we've, we mentioned earlier, Finn Harps are having a tough season. They came down from the Premier Division. Um, they're trying to rebuild Dave Rogers in there, but it's a very young squad, a very inexperienced squad. From what I've seen tonight, they went 1-0 up, you know, but um, they did, just don't, didn't have it to, to hold on to that lead. Cove's momentum, once they got the goal, is, is driven them on. And, you know, um, it's a tough task there Dave Rogers has at Finn Harps. Well, the wind has picked up as well here, as you can see by that uh, big kick out, the way the wind has taken that. And it looks like Finn Harps are going to go seven league matches without a win, unless they can somehow turn things around here, but uh, doesn't look likely with 20 odd minutes to go. 3-1 behind and a man down. Waterford now, two up on Longford. So it really does look like Ramblers will do it tonight. This ref is trigger happy. He's He's happy to blow the whistle rather than leave the game go. Too many times tonight he's done that, made that call. Well, the Cove Ramblers fans are really enjoying things this season after an awful season in their anniversary year last year. But they more than uh, picked up for it this year. They might get another one here. They're looking for goal number four, and that really will put the game to bed. Brown getting the cross in, should be the keepers, and uh, watch the flight of the ball all the way. Could be tricky too with that wind. Yeah, the wind could come into it now, could play a factor. Big thump up field again. And that will be a free kick for Cone Ramblers. Lee Stacey. Again, good strong play by Matthew McKevitt. Took his goal well. McKevitt, Darty, and Rowe all on target for Cove Ramblers tonight. Can't ask for any more from your strike force. Echobar getting forward. Really powerful run by the centre back here. That's a lovely ball through as well. And a chance here for Darty, maybe. And there's the fourth as in. It is. That's beautiful. Mikey Rowe gets his second, and you have to say, that was a fantastic team goal. 
and you have to credit the centre back Justin Egobar. What a powerful run from defence to send the lovely ball through. Darty setting up his strike partner and Rowe with his second goal and Cove are out of sight. Cove are on the crest of a wave. The confidence is booming. Justin Egobar stro strode out of the fence his long legs. Gathered up, gathered up the pace and made a pass, super pass into Mikey Rowe, who played a 1 2. A terrific flick from Jack Darty, put Mikey back into position, and Mikey just slotted in the corner. So that's quality play all around from Cove Ramblers. And again, we keep mentioning it, their confidence is up, and no better way to be going into the latter part of the stage of this, se this season. They're hitting form at the right time, and finishing the season so strongly, Shane Keegan's side, and that was an indication of a team on top of their game, really. And uh, you have to say, that was a fantastic goal by Cove Ramblers. They're really putting harps to the sword now. Beat them 4-1 here, back in May. And they lead by four goals to one tonight. There's Darty, and he's caused harps all kinds of problems tonight. It really has. There's Brown, and uh, back into the pad of Darty again. And the defender got there just in time. As Darty was looking for his second goal tonight. But if anybody doubted Rambler's credentials in the playoffs, I might have a second pick now because they're the team on form. It's uh, really Galway United and Cove Ramblers have been the teams showing the best form late on in the season. Well, Galway throughout the season, of course, but Cove are a form team. Yeah, absolutely. They're well up there and it's, it's the camaraderie is good in the camp. There's a good atmosphere in the camp. They're fighting for, for each other um, and most of all they're scoring goals winning games. Well, they're going to win tonight for sure. Here's Brown. Brown gets it across and there's another one. Jack Doherty gets his second. And Ramblers are really in the mood now. Five goals to one. And there's no stopping Jack Doherty. He's just scoring now in every game. Yeah, he's, he's buzzing. Um, Cover buzzing. Good play. Keen Brown getting in on the act. Great run in behind the fence. Laid the ball across and Jack Doherty finds the bottom corner. And they're hungry for more goals. Whatever's left, there'll be more goals in this. If they continue keep playing the way they are. Poor old hearts are, hearts are demoralised. Long journey back for them with their heads down. Well, with 40 minutes gone in the game, John, you wouldn't have seen this scoreline because uh, Ramblers were struggling to create any kind of decent chances. But that was all changed just before half-time. An important goal for Mikey Rowe. Yeah, and absolutely. Ramblers have kicked on now in the second half. Well, the old famous saying, Trevor, goals change games. Goals win games, goals change games. And that's exactly what happened. They went into that dressing room in a di different, uh, with a different feeling than they would have if they didn't equalise. So they come out in the second half and they pushed on. And they're, they're, they've got the game by the by the throat here and they're going to push on for more goals well Shane Keegan will absolutely be thrilled got the team in at half time at one each and four goals followed in the second half for his team and it's far from over yet because we've got over a quarter of an hour left and Ramblers won't want to stop at five look at this this really is uh, exhibition stuff from Jack Dart you have to say little flicks around the corner do I have to pick him out in the match? Yeah, it's, gotta it's, pick him out no, in the match. No, no. I think it's uh that'll be kind of an <laughs> easy toss for you tonight, John. <laughs> Could have picked it there ten minutes ago. Yeah. But no lads, every everybody's contributed, but obviously Jack's there's no doubt about his class. He's yeah, he's yeah. different class, he's different gravy, as they say. He's done flicks here and down that poor old Matthew Mackinson won't want to be facing him again. He's like running ragged. And he's been involved in every goal. He scored two. Um, he set up Mikey Rowe, didn't he? For the third, for yeah, first for one. two, for two, two of them, two for goals, two of them. Yeah. So he scored two. Set set Mikey up for the other two, and was probably involved in uh, to a lesser extent extent in matching McEvitt's goal. Yeah, on for a hat trick. Basically, now. yeah, he is. Yeah. Him and Mikey Rowe are going for a hat trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, uh, I remember here, John when he played for, we'll just hold it there, Harps looking for a goal back oh, here, and they've penalty. got a penalty. penalty yeah, yeah. Brendan well, Files, no need to go down, but... So much incident in the second half, we'd have we've had penalties, we'd have sending offs. Yeah, everything. Will we have a penalty save? <laughs> That's the question. 
but uh, this will be pure consolation in any case of Finn Harps. 5-1 down. And uh, inside the last quarter of an hour of the game. Tony McNamee then, the captain, will uh, take this for Harps. Against uh, Lee Stacey. So McNamee, can he get a goal back for Harps here? He can't. It's saved. Mystic O'Rourke. I called it. I called it. <laughs> Great save. Poor penalty. Great height for the keeper. And Lee Stacey did what he had to do. He got down, went down to his left, pushed it away, got it out of danger. But it's all going Rambler's way in the second half. Stacey saving a penalty. He's been terrific too, you must say, for Rambler's. Three clean sheets before tonight for the keeper. And penalty save now as well. And Abbott biting it to challenge us here, and that's a free kick for Ambrose. But I was about to say, uh, John, before that uh, penalty decision for Finn Harps, that uh, I remember giving uh, you giving man of the match to Jack Darty when he played here against Ambrose uh, for Wexford. And he got that wonderful free kick on the, the far side yeah, on the yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. I am, like, uh, <laughs> I've been given the, the task of keep picking the man of the match, which I don't mind, like, but last season was so demoralising of a Cove's yeah. point of view, and it had to be a Cove Ramblers player, they were saying. But, so I went I went against the grain, and I had to go against the grain that night. Trevor, you were commenting with me. We have to go, I have to go against the grain because of the undoubted class that Jack Darty showed. Yeah. And I'm sure that uh, made his mind up and sign for Cove Ramblers this season. I'll take credit all, all credit for it. <laughs> yeah, little, will, little did we know that he would end up here yeah. at St. Coleman's Park. Yeah. There's no surprise. He won the game for Wexford that night, I think. Yeah. Uh, with that he's been scoring goals. Kick. Yeah. And that's a foul on Jack Doherty. Free kick for Ramblers. Premier player for you, John, Jack Doherty? Well, see, that's the thing about it. Like, he hasn't been in the Premier Division, really. Has he? I'm not too familiar with his full time, full career, but um, he will find it. It will be more difficult in the Premier Division, obviously. You know, he's gone up a higher level, but he has class. Um, whether he goes up with Cove Ramblers or, you know, maybe a Premier Division team would come for him. But, you know, he would certainly be a shot, worth a shot to get into the Premier Division and, and show his skills there with better players amongst around him and things like that. So, yeah, he would have the quality, definitely. So Mikey Rowe into the mix here and the keeper came a long way for that. Back in there again and the goalkeeper has it in his grasp. Well, is this Rambler's biggest win of the season? If they uh, see it out at 5-1, maybe 6, I think it is. Jack Darty chasing this again. They did beat Harps early on 4-1. Yeah. It's a big scoreline, isn't it? Water for now, 3 up on Longford, so... Yeah, you can take it as Cove Ramblers are in the playoff spots for, for this season. Yeah. It's assured. Seal tonight. And Galway have become champions tonight because uh, they're two up and carry now. Yeah. Surely Caulfield, John Caulfield, has led Galway yeah, to the first division. Yeah, great for John Caulfield and Galway. You know, whether it's tonight or next week or whatever, they're surely going to win. The, they will win the league. And as I say, they have a great opportunity in the FAI Cup to emulate their Western neighbour Sligo, who did it in '93, '94. Thanks for Christy Ryan for that information. <laughs> Ramblers know all about Sligo, of course, from the 80s, early 80s, and those epic cup semi-finals. How do you view this season's FA Cup uh, semi-finals, John? I know it's a competition you've close to your heart. Um, I think it's wide open, Trevor. Must come through a lot of bodies. You have yeah. the you have the um, the two country teams, Cork. Cork City and Galway have the home draws against the two Dublin teams. And also, um, there's every opportunity that could be Galway versus Cork City in the final. Nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, obviously with the obvious um, connection between John Caulfield and Cork City, that would be uh, nice and, uh, you know, nice one to look forward to. But I'm sure Bowles and St. Pat's will have something to say about that. So, you know, it's wide open, as I say. We know Caulfield's uh, love affair with the cup as well. But uh, Ramblers make a few switches late on here.
Mike McCarthy and McEvitt making way. And uh, Luke Desmond's in. Now, Ben Harps looking for a goal back here, but not like that. Ramblers enjoying their football now. Total control. Well, that's nice play by Desmond. And now Jack Doherty. Is this the hat-trick? Doherty, oh, he's gone wide. Well, it was an opportunity for him. Now, Ramblers looking for a sixth here. Jason Abbott. Not a good cross for him. And it's a goal kick. It looked yeah, like Jack Doherty yeah, was going to get the hat-trick yeah, there, didn't it? Where was it going? It was going on to his less favoured right foot. He didn't fancy it. And, it was, and to be fair to Matthew Makinson, he did well. He shepherded him out onto his right foot and forced him away from the goal. But it was an opportunity. Great ball from Luke Desmond. First time ball out of it, outside of his left foot. Put, put Jack Doherty away, we thought. But Matthew Makinson did make up for his earlier mistakes in the game. And Premier Division action tonight as well. Dundalk and both scoreless. Shelburne still leading Cork City 2 1 in Dublin. Atalka, Sligo and Derry scoreless. And Pats and Dundalk, but Pats leading Dundalk 2 1 in UCD. Rovers scoreless, which is surprising. 5 1 here to Cove Ramblers. Longford 3 down at home to Waterford. And Galway 2 0 up on Kerry. So 15 points, the difference at the top, isn't it? And um, Waterford have only four matches left, so that's Galway crowned champions tonight. Unless Kerry can get a couple of goals back. Mikey Rowe. Nice play by Rowe. Now Darty in the middle here, if they can pick him out. And there's a shot from distance, pushed away by the keeper, Darty. Trying a spectacular one. But Ramblers now look a tread every time they attack. Shout out to all the people watching from all over the world. My good mate Corey Griffin is out in Rome. Are you out there for the Raider Cup, Cor? Enjoy the game, which you are enjoying. Fair play to you. That's just warmer in Rome tonight, John. I don't know about that. <laughs> Pretty cold up here. I need my Macron jacket, which I was promised last season. There you go. <laughs> Cove getting forward again here. It's, uh, Charlie Lyons picks out his man as well. It's a good ball by the defender. Nice turn here by Mikey Rowe. All about the cross here, and uh, our Rambler's going to get in again, not this time. The line should tidy this up. Nice play again. Here's Abbott with a lot of room here for the captain. Wide it goes to Dale Holland. Abbott. He's left that a bit short, so that'll be... Well, it should have been a free kick. It's caught late then, the substitute. Aaron McLaughlin. Make it just a bit over five minutes to go. It's Charlie Lyons on by Doherty. Nice turn here. Dale Holland left up behind him. Abbott picks it up, though. And a really good game in the middle of the park. Tonight, the captain, Jason Abbott.
That's lovely again. And Ramblers looking for a sixth here. Brown and Doherty still there for Ramblers. And eventually cleared. So into the final few minutes at St. Thomas Park. Ramblers leading Harps by five goals to one. Elsewhere, Galway are leading at Kerry by two goals to nil. Surely championship in the bag for John Corfu's men. Waterford three up away at Longford. Treaty leading at Lone 3 1. And Wexford leading Bray by two goals to one. For all the scores in the closing minutes. And confirmation of John O'Rourke's man of the match, Jack Doherty. And uh, nobody would uh, argue with you tonight, John. <laughs> I don't think so. I think I, I, think I got that one right, Trev. <laughs> You've had a few uh, spectators having a little go off you with your man of the match choices, but uh, not tonight. <laughs> What did they know, John? I was just... I leave, I leave you to say that, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> More switches coming for Ramblers in the closing minutes here. <laughs> Dean Larkin coming in for Brendan Frahel late on. So Ramblers have emptied their bench. Dara O'Sullivan Connell coming in for Kean Brown as well. Comfortable night in the end for Ramblers. Didn't look that way for most of the first half. That is your ball, John. Uh, felt short, felt short. Yeah, those just harsh, felt short. Those harsh, <laughs> yeah. those harsh players are getting the passing wrong all night. So. Story of your life, John. Premier Division, Drogheda and Bowes nil all into the uh, closing minute. Shelburne still leading Cork City 2-1 at Talca Park. Sligo, a goal up in Derry. So that's Derry's chances of winning the title gone tonight, surely. Yeah, and what it also does is secure Sligo's place. So yeah. um, with City losing, you're, it's looking yeah. almost certain that City are going to be in that playoff spot, yeah. Trevor. So there's a lot of things happening tonight. UCD could have been um, relegated tonight if they um, if they were beaten by Rovers. But is it, what's the score now? Nil all, yeah. I think they might... Save for another day. St. Pat's two up in Dundalk as well. So, well, kind of surprising results uh, tonight around the, the, the league, the Electricity League of Ireland. Now, Mikey Rowe on a hat trick here. It's a good delivery, and the goalkeeper keeps it out for now. Back in there again, and that's. Uh, oh, he's dropped it. He's looked uncomfortable tonight, the keeper for Finn Harps. you got to say. And that's Abbott in there, and uh, has to deal with this as well. Has he brought that over the line? Where's uh, VAR? Oh, uh, yeah. Paul, can you supply the VAR now? I wonder as Paul got VAR it. here. Relive never get the VAR going there. On LOI TV. The linesman, was, the linesman was 20 yards off. Couldn't see it. I tell you what, it looked behind for me. And, and that goalkeeper has a, an off night, to say the least. So with just a couple of minutes left to St. Cormans Park, John, what's your assessment of the game? Well, as you said, for, for the first 40 minutes of the first half, Trevor, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have seen what's uh, after going on here in the second half. And, then um, you know, Cove will be delighted. But, you know, they have that quality, so they've shown it tonight. Finn Harris, when they went down to 10 men, they were demoralised as it was. So that really put them up with Cove in now for the sixth. Oh, still there for Jason Abbott. Cove. But uh, Cove will be loving this, you know, it's, it's only the momentum is continuing to, to grow with them. I'm looking for one more goal before the end, Cove Ramblers, but they have to defend here for now. At least Stacey should take care of things here, which he does, and uh, works out nicely for Ramblers. Charlie Lyons, and uh, well, kind of a rush of blood for Charlie there. Yeah, Charlie didn't know what was going on, but it wasn't a good ball in the end. So we congratulate uh, John Corfu's Galway United tonight. They have uh, won the Atrice League First Division. Yeah, congrats to the lads. Well deserved. Best outfit in the First Division by a mile. And that's showed in the, in the points tally that they have accrued up to now. And there's still a five games to go. Galway are three up in Kerry and that's a uh, job done really. 
And uh, David Hurley scoring again tonight. He's got loads of goals for now. Here's Mikey Rowe, meanwhile, for Ramblers. But David Hurley, what's he on? About 15 goals this season? David's had a terrific season and deserved like uh, when we were... When we started doing this, um, commentating Trevor, we were here, we were watching David Hurley score goals for Cove Ramblers, and he always stood out, he always stood, felt, I always felt as he could play at a higher level, he's on to show that he's played full time with Galway, he's been a great asset to their side, and his left foot was phenomenal here for Cove Ramblers, I'm, I'm sure he's after scoring a lot of goals that for, Galway, for Galway with that left foot of his. Scored another penalty tonight, he doesn't miss them does he? So into at a time we go at St. Coleman's Park. And Ramblers leading Finn Harps by five goals to one. Four second half goals. Two from this man, Jack Tarty. There's another one of his trademark flicks. Abbott. Now all about the cross here. Abbott floats it in there, but it's an easy take for the goalkeeper. Well, Shane Keegan will be absolutely thrilled with this performance uh, tonight. Absolutely thrilled. Yeah. Obviously, the result helps, like, but um, it's all about keeping that level of performance going now, Trevor. So into the uh, out of time we go. Four by Abbott. Abbott competing for this again. He's been terrific tonight, the captain. So has Jack Doherty. And uh, he's fouled here, surely. Well, the referee hasn't blown the whistle. Doherty is wondering why. That's a good out ball, isn't it? Intelligent. That's Charlie Lyons. And uh, Abbott wants it again and has it. Again, spreading the play wide on the flanks. I'll tell you, the fifth goal in particular has been brilliant tonight, wasn't it, John? Yeah, great move, great move. Everybody really enjoyed watching that. And uh, offside flag up here. Well, the crowd have got their money's worth again tonight at St. Coleman's Park. They've been coming out and Big numbers, credit to support yeah. for Ramblers. Yeah, it's attractive football. Goals being scored, you know, um, exciting times. Nineteen goals scored in the Eritrea League of Ireland First Division tonight. Six of them here. Ramblers leading five-one. And we're nearly at the end. It's Charlie Lyons. Good delivery. And there is the full-time whistle. Job well done by Cove Ramblers. They have secured their place in the promotion playoffs with four games to spare. Credit Shane Keegan and his team. A brilliant five goals to one win over Finn Harps after going behind so early to respond like that. So congratulations to Shane Keegan and his coaching staff and to Cove Ramblers who will be in the promotion playoffs. And they'll be looking to consolidate third place, no doubt with the remaining games, but too strong for Finn Harps in the end, particularly in the second half. Two from Jack Darty, two from Mikey Rowe, and Matthew McKevitt getting in on the act as well. It was a really good performance by Shane Keegan's man, and it finishes here at St. Comas Park. Thanks to my uh, co-commentator, John O'Rourke, by the way. It finishes here at Cove Ramblers 5, Finn Harps 1.